Hey everybody, it's Ridley, and today we're going to talk about section 1.5 in your let's make sure we're by here, in your calculus books. We're talking about 1.5, which is exponential functions. Exponential functions. All right. So let's go ahead and discuss. Again, you've seen these in your pre-calculus in your algebra too. So we're not going to take too much time. That should be we're not going to take too much time. Remember back in the day, we went, okay, we're going to build a coordinate tree and an exponential function. What's its mother graph? What's it look like? Remember, it's y equals a to the x, where a has to be greater than zero, right? Remember that guy? Again, if we did y equal 2 to the x, or we did y equal 1 third to the x, a 3, by the way, to the x, and we would build over here, on our coordinate tree, well, what we would end up with is we'd end up with a graph that looked like this. It's going to pass through the mother point, which is 0, 1, right? All right, you guys. So, uh, sorry about that. We got a little jump going on here. Whoa, what did I lose? Oh, there we are. Um, I had some visitors come in the, in the building. That's why there's this hard edit all of a sudden. All right, so uh, the mother point for all exponential functions, and you're just starting to build one of these guys without having to go through the whole coordinate tree thing, is 0, 1. And if it's y equals 2 to the x, y equals 17 to the x, y equals 93 to the x, we don't really care. It's going to look like this guy. Right? Remember that? The bigger it is, the bigger the a is. So if I have y equals... 5 to the x, just again, still the same mother point, but this guy blows up a lot faster and it heads for zero. Remember this guy right here is y equals zero is our vertical asymptote. All right, now all exponential functions, if a is greater than one, so in this case we're talking about a being greater than one, look like this. If a equals one, well that's just ridiculous, right? So we only talk about Notice how I wrote a is greater than zero? Well, it's also a not equal to one. Otherwise, I don't know what just happened there. <clears throat> Excuse me, otherwise it's decidedly boring, it's y equals one. That's just silly. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at what this is. Now, before we do that, let's get into a little bit of graph theory. We have to start thinking in calculus, we gotta start thinking about functions as families. And all that stuff that we learned back in algebra two and in and in pre-calculus, we gotta start thinking about how can I move a function around? How can I think visually about what functions do? And in doing so, we make we basically lighten our burden. We don't have to think as hard. We don't have to reach for that for the idiot box as much as we typically do. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Excuse me. So remember, the idiot box is only as smart as the idiot pushing the button. So if I look at this, can you see that this could actually be written as y equals three to the negative x, right? Because b to the negative n is equal to 1 over b to the n, right? So what do you remember what happens if I take a function, any function f of x, what happens to its graph if I go f of negative x? So this, think of this as you start with y equals 3 to the x, which would look something like this, like that. So this guy right here would be y equals 3 to the x, 3 to the x, excuse me. And then you do y equals 3 to the negative x. Well, remember, f of negative x reflects the graph across the y-axis, just like this. So this would be y equals 3 to the negative x to the negative x, affectionately known as 1 third the x. So again, change colors. Again, if a is between, if a is between 0 and 1, then I end up with a family of curves. Still goes through 0, 1. Remember, anything raised to the 0 is 1, except 0 or infinity, of course. Those are indeterminate forms, which we'll talk more about later, right? So say this guy right here would be 1 fifth to the x. If I wanted to do, I haven't tried green yet, so let's try that out. Oh, wow, that's terrible. Yeah. That would be one-tenth to the x, something like that. All right? So 
that right there is exponential functions in a nutshell. Now, let's, real quick, let's make sure that we are, that our computers don't tell lies to us. So I'm going to pop out my, my TI here. And let's take a gander at these guys. Um, if I, go, I already loaded them up for us. So this is, I put in y equals 2 to the x, and I put in y equals 1 third to the x. And if you look close, here's y equals 2 to the x. It's already been graphed. Whoops. If you look close, whoa, what happened there? <laughs> that was cool. Um, let's go here. Wow. All right, that was fun. I'm sorry. Yeah, 2 to the x is this guy right here. And there's 1 third to the x. All right? Notice that 1 third to the x is a little bit steeper. It's just a little bit steeper, which makes sense because it takes 3 to the x, which is definitely going to be steeper than 2 to the x, and it reflects it across the y axis. All right? So that's making sure that we can think graphically without our calculator, but being able to confirm things with our calculator. By the way, these are all the keystrokes that I did for doing this. this we're getting used to some new software here, guys. So. Uh, you're going to have to bear with me, and if it gets too confusing, let me know, okay?